standards and right education system. I'm the former Frank Key. But the Northwest has really need somebody different. The career, you're used to winning a lot. It was everything to us. Seven or eight weeks of two days. They really made me appreciate we're allowed to win. And he's coming in and we'll be shooting the whole time. Let's go back real quick to the, the Enid Walker thing. And of course, we have turning in confined space. Legitimately, you know, a little more. I could say tip on that, Steve. Put my hat on and get out there and do the job. The television model that you watched growing up. Houston, this is the International Space Station. City Connections begins right now. Hello again and welcome to City Connections. I'm Steve Kine. Thank you for joining us today. Once again, we have an artist in the house for City Connections and my very special guest today is Catherine Freshly. Catherine, welcome to the Hi, ETN Steve. Studios. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, you're welcome. Um, you know, I, I can't spell art or artists or that, that's my statement to say that that's foreign to me. So I really admire people who can really play the piano, who can draw, who can do all kinds of things. So I'm really excited about having you here today. Now, as we were talking before the show started, I understand that you're from the great Northwest. That's it's true. It's very lush and kind of pretty out there on, on the coast and all. But you've been in Enid for a while. Um, how has that impacted your painting? Because I understand you're in the landscaping kind of uh, sunsets and all that. So has it added to your portfolio or how, how has the move impacted your work? It's had a really significant impact, Steve. I was painting more of a, as a hobby when I lived in the Northwest and I was painting the scenery around where we lived. I'm originally from Portland, Oregon, but I was living in Spokane, Washington. And when I moved here, I, I had never been to Oklahoma or really anywhere around here. And I was just overcome by how flat it is <laughs> and how huge the sky is. And I just love the wide open spaces and I've painted more than a hundred paintings, probably close to 200 paintings in the approximately three years that I've lived here of Oklahoma. And I, I just think it's beautiful. And I've even been fortunate to travel around the country and even around the world since I've lived in Oklahoma, but I just keep painting Oklahoma. I've, and it's uh, it's been really great for my career also, this Very this good. new inspiration. Yeah. Well, that's good to know that Oklahoma was good, <laughs> good for something yeah. for you. Uh, tell us a little bit about the painting process. Well, let me back up and say this. You said you painted hundreds of, of paintings here in Oklahoma. Can you give us a time frame from when, let's say, you have the idea or mm -hmm. you have that, that rainbow or that landscape or the, the mountain or whatever it is to the finished product? Can you tell us how long that takes? I can give you my best guess, <laughs> but the, the short answer is it really varies. And I, I paint from photographs that I take. Some, sometimes people will send me their own photographs and commission me to paint something. But um, when I'm painting something of my choosing, it's always a photograph that I've taken personally and a scene that, that I have seen. And so I might, uh, for instance, be driving to Tulsa. My husband and I went to Tulsa in early May and I took photos as we were driving out there and they were just, it was a, a beautiful day. The, the sky was blue with some big white puffy clouds and all the fields were really pretty color green. And I came home and within a few days I started working on a big painting. It was four feet wide and um, 30 inches tall and I finished that painting within a couple weeks and maybe even maybe even one week and that's not painting full time it's maybe 10 to 15 hours uh, on that particular painting and I always have multiple paintings that I'm working on at, at one time so I might paint um, a layer of paint on one painting and then I'll set that canvas aside and while that dries I'll work on another painting okay. but sometimes paintings just really challenge me and I won't know how to achieve what I want to achieve or, or how to solve what I want to solve in the composition. So I might work on a painting for the better part of a year and I'll just, I'll set it aside and get frustrated and then maybe a few months later I'll have the courage to pick it back up again and try again. So on your trip to Tulsa and you're mm -hmm. seeing the prairie and, the, and just the openness, did you see any cattle? Yeah. Did you see yeah. any buffalo? <laughs> you know? I didn't see any buffalo, but I did see a lot of cows. Those and cows have been there for years, by the way. <laughs> Everybody has seen those. And yeah. As you drive back and forth on uh -huh. 412, I say, yeah, those cows are they're still there. Yeah. So the cows would not be in your painting. You're strictly more of just the, the land, if you will, and, and the blue sky kind of deal, well, right? Well, 
Almost. So I have painted some cows, but I definitely don't, they're not the focus, and I don't really have any skill for painting animals. So I will paint them okay. just on the in the distance, and they'll really be not much more than black or brown dots. So they, they'll okay. be, you will know that they're supposed to be cows, and because I really like seeing the cows in the field, but sure. it's, I'm not really interested in painting animals, nor do I have the skill to do okay. that. And you're so true on the skill part, because there's a guy that I know who uh, paints, uh, Texas Longhorns, mm. and it's almost like you, you touch the yeah. painting, they're there, but it's such a skill, and it's so Certainly. detailed. Mm -hmm. He probably could not paint a cloud, but he can do a Texas Longhorn, yeah. so it's very, very impressive. So, well, let's go back to the beginning. Sure. Um, when did you discover your painting talents? Did you have a big chief tablet and was drawing all the time and said, oh, I want to do the watercolor uh -huh. thing, paint by numbers or something? Go back to the beginning. When well, did you say, hey, I think I can do this? I have always been making some kind of art. And when I was a child, I mostly drew. And But anything creative I wanted to do, and that's always been my main hobby and passion. And I took art classes in middle school and high school. And then in college, I took one painting class. I didn't go to art school. I took one painting class as one of my electives. And it was just painting 101 in acrylic. All my paintings are acrylic. And that, I learned so much in that class. And that really um, shifted my interest in art from drawing to painting. So after I graduated from college, which was in 2009, I spent a lot of time painting in the evenings and on the weekends. I lived by myself, so I, I would paint as a hobby. And then I, I started um, selling a couple paintings, and then I sold more and more. And I was working full-time, and I, I worked full-time for seven years after college, but I was always kind of building this up sure. in the background. And um, as I spent more time on it and got better and uh, took a couple additional classes and, and I was able to sell more, it became... Uh, it, more viable that it might actually be a job and of course you know I was I, I want to say my parents were very encouraging and they're very supportive but I never really thought that I could be an artist as a job and that it was a really an actual feasible way to make money but I've just been really persistent and just grown it gradually and gradually to the point where I quit my full-time job. Very good. Our special guest today on City Connections is Catherine Freshly, and uh, she's an artist, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the acrylic and also the canvas, and uh, she's kind of alluded a little bit to her, fa favorite, excuse me, her favorite subject, but we'll find out more about Catherine and her work right after this. City Connections. Thank you for staying with us today on this uh, very exciting program again with another artist. Her name is Catherine Freshly and, and Catherine uh, focuses on uh, landscape um, paintings if you will. And Catherine on your website as, as I looked and we'll talk a little bit later in the show about <clears throat> how people can contact you and, and learn more about things on your website. But you have a statement that says original and custom acrylic paintings that celebrate the beauty of our everyday landscapes. So is that the synopsis of your work? Well, or? I would say that's kind of a, a brief in, intro. So interestingly, my background is in advertising and specifically digital strategy. So that means figuring out how to make your website and social media and email marketing as effective as possible. So when someone comes to my website, they'll immediately see an image of one of my paintings and then I have that statement right under it. So I want people to pretty quickly be able to understand what it is that I do, why they're here, what they can expect to see. And like you were saying earlier, art is not really your forte. And when, uh, whenever anyone is invested in their career or interested in a subject, it's so easy to just forget how many things you're saying are, are jargon and, and how much you know that the, someone who's not in your field doesn't know. So I want to be really clear about what it is that I'm selling, which are original paintings. They're acrylic on canvas. And then custom, um, that means that I will 
paint something specifically for someone. So I do a lot of commissions. Someone will send me a photo and I'll paint that for them. And then really what I'm trying to do with my paintings is, is celebrate our natural beauty that's around us every day. Okay. And it's, you know, it's not the Grand Canyon, it's not the Rockies, it's just the flat lands of Oklahoma, which to me are so beautiful. And I think that it's worth pausing and really observing and, and um, just recognizing how impressive this natural beauty, this everyday beauty really is. So... If you move to North Carolina next, mm -hmm. with all the trees and just the lushness, I guess you make that adjustment and you'll paint that? Is that how it works? You know, or? Steve, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure and I'm curious to find out myself okay. because with my husband's job we do move around and uh, I really don't know what I'll paint. It's, it's obviously great if, if what you are inspired by is what your audience wants to buy. And right now, that's really well uh, aligned for me. I really want to paint Oklahoma. I'm feeling really inspired. And the people of Oklahoma have responded really well to my painting. So um, the next place we go, I just hope, I guess, that I'll be inspired by the local scenery. It, and it's then, just a curious question. Yeah. I thought, well, if you can adjust right. to Oklahoma, you can adjust to uh, sure. a state with a whole lot yeah, of trees. But you know, <laughs> this country has a lot of prairie in it. So we, you know, even Washington, the part of Washington that we lived in before, it was wheat country. It was rolling hills and mm -hmm. a little bit more mountains in the background. But it, all in all, it's not that different. As as I was doing the research for our visit today mm -hmm. and, and looking at your website, it mentioned some of your consulting projects and some of the um, organizations, companies that have commissioned uh, some work. Mm -hmm. What are they looking for when they contact you? You've kind of touched on some, some of your clients, if you will, that they request this. Mm -hmm. But my, my interest is, what are they looking for when they contact Catherine? Well, an interesting project I worked on last summer was with an assisted living facility and okay. a memory care center down in, um, I guess it's technically Oklahoma City, but real close to Edmond. And the, the CEO of the organization contacted me. He had seen my work at the Festival of the Arts in Oklahoma City in April. And he contacted me and said, we have this, um, in the entryway of the assisted living facility, there's a big fireplace and we don't have anything hanging over the fireplace. And I would really like to have something for our residents. Um, I would like to honor them basically by having a piece of original art by a local artist rather than just going you know, to Ross or, or Hobby Lobby and, and buying art there. I really want to um, give them this gift of a piece of original art and something that feels hopeful because you know these people sure. are elderly. A lot of them have um, dementia or Alzheimer's. And so he commissioned me to paint the view that's looking out of the front door. And it's something that feels hopeful and peaceful and calming. And I know for medical environments, that's something that's really important and that has even been shown to improve um, patient recovery and patient satisfaction. So I, I had a, another project. It actually didn't end up going through, but I was working with an interior designer who was working on a, a small hospital in rural Washington, and she was talking to me about the surgery room and the recovery room and how each of those rooms we would want to achieve a, a different feeling for the patient with that, um, with that landscape and, and how that can really have a big impact. So I think people want... They want some sort of beauty in their home. A sure. lot of, a lot of, um, when I'm not working with a, a corporation, but just working with an individual, a lot of them will say, "Oh, I, you know, I want, this place is really special to me. This is my grandpa's farm, or this is my, the drive that we take to such and such house every summer." And I just, I want to be able to look at that all the time. There's an individual here in Enid that takes a lot of uh, photography, and I guess his forte is golf courses, mm -hmm. but he also uh, does a great job of capturing Enid. And I know a lot of his work was in a car dealership in Oklahoma City, oh, uh -huh. and I was looking the other day, and I go, well, that's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. I know that guy kind of yeah. deal. So you have those special interests, and mm -hmm. I know that dealership kind of reached out because this guy with the camera can really mm -hmm. capture the essence of Oklahoma, and again, that was probably your challenge to capture that essence of looking out the building. It, yes, and, exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that personal touch and mm -hmm. that painting for, the, for that organization. Well, we've been visiting 15, 20 minutes now, and I think I'm getting a little bit of insight into who you are and so forth. As an individual that's watching, watching the show, Catherine, and they go to the website mm -hmm. and they see some of your examples and some of your work and so forth, 
Uh, <clears throat> what else would they learn about you? Not that they're just playing 20 questions, but they're just kind of curious about the person. They see your work. Well, I think it's really important to learn about the person, and I spend a lot of time thinking about that, actually, especially with my background in advertising and marketing and, and the fact that I don't have my art in galleries. I'm doing all of that work myself, which I enjoy doing, and I know that in any business, in any field, people like to buy from people that they know, like, and trust. So if I can share a little bit about myself and share about my my process and my inspiration, I think that helps me build a relationship with my buyers, which is really important to me. So if you go to my website, there's a little bit of information about me, um, kind of a bio, but then I also post news updates. I don't want to call it a blog because it's, it's rather irregular but it, it reads like a blog. So sometimes I share things about my inspiration and the role that I feel I play as an artist documenting these scenes. I've even, uh, because I want to help other artists, shared information about how I develop my pricing or how I brand my work. So I, I want to share freely. I, I want to help people and I, I want people to feel like they know me and know who they're buying from. So there's uh, a, a range of things that you would be able to find on my website. I know you uh, have displayed your work at First Friday and mm -hmm. some other local events here in Enid, and I think you have some of your work in some local businesses mm -hmm. and so forth. But if a person says, well, that, that's pretty impressive on the website, but I kind of want to touch and feel sure. what this what this canvas really mm -hmm. looks like. Do you have a gallery or, or, or how is it set up to say, you know, I want to go see some of Catherine's work? Well, I try to make my art as accessible to po as possible to people. I love sharing it. So as you mentioned there, the um, one-time events or you know, recurring but just one-day events like First Friday that I often participate in. And right now I actually have four paintings hanging at Da Vinci's um, coffee shop and gelato shop over by Jumbo at Willow in Cleveland. And those will be there until mid-July. So people can go there and see the paintings. And then if someone wants to see more paintings, then I would encourage them to contact me and my information is on my website. And I would uh, love to invite them either to my an office space that I have downtown where I can show them more paintings or sometimes I'll even invite clients over to my home. My studio is in my home and some people you know, really want to see where you paint, where you know, where does the magic happen? So <laughs> sometimes I've had clients so to So that's what to my it's home. called, where <laughs> the magic happens. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, do, do, you, um, do you name your paintings? I remember talking to a, a sculpture uh, mm -hmm. artist, uh, for lack of a better term that I can mm -hmm. come up with, and he said one of his biggest challenges was to really come up with two, three, maybe four words at the most mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to name his piece. So do you name yours? I do I? name all my paintings, okay. and I would say the I, maybe I just expend all my creativity in the actual painting because the names are normally pretty just factual. Like I was Blue sky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, blue sky. I often have either the date okay. or you know the month or the highway that I was on because a lot of the photos I take while we're driving or I will have the name of the town. So I was talking about the painting that I, I did after a recent drive to Tulsa and that painting was called Tulsa May Drive. And so I okay. have Highway 412 Cows, for instance. So <laughs> the, the titles aren't very inventive, but they're accurate and it's actually helpful and it's helped me even sell paintings before because people will see it a, a place that is familiar to them and exactly. then and then we'll get to exactly. chatting and then, and then they'll say oh I even I know that particular piece of property I know that ranch Catherine as, as individuals are watching this interview uh, for the next you know several weeks uh, they may be listening to the interview and not actually watching mm -hmm. but would you tell us uh, basically out loud can you tell us how the best way is to contact you we'll have your contact information sure. on the screen on the screen but just in case somebody's in the other room listening to yes, you yes yes how would they uh, reach out to you well I would want people to go to my website which is www.catherinefreshlyart.com my name is spelled c-a-t-h-e-r-i-n-e -E, and freshly is F-R-E-S-H-L-E-Y, so that's CatherineFreshlyArt.com, and really if you Google me, you should be able to find me pretty easily. And then once you get to my website, there's a page called Contact, and you can either fill out a form or they might, you'll see my email address, and just send me an email, fill out that form, and I'll get back to you quickly, and 
we can chat. Okay, very good. Well, Catherine, I've gone down my exhaustive list of questions. Is, is there any topic that this is your opportunity to say, well, Steve, there's one thing I want to share that you didn't talk about. Is well, there anything that come to mind? I feel a little bit like I'm an advocate for artists because, like I mentioned briefly before, I left my full-time job just over a year ago, and that was after careful planning and months of preparation and discussions with my husband and our friends about did this, you know, would this make sense? Um, but I'm relatively young, and I'm on track to replace the income that I had at my full-time job. And you know, there's just so much narrative about starving artists and people <laughs> not treating it like a business. And yeah. I just want to encourage anyone that has some sort of passion that you know it has to be viable you have to have a track record of selling whatever it is that you're doing you have to actually be making some money from it but if if you have evidence that this is something that could be you know a, a legitimate side gig or even a full-time job if you put in the effort and treat it like a business i think that there's really a lot of opportunity for probably more people to pursue something that they've just been shutting out for a long time and and writing off as is is not possible, but I think it's, I think it's possible. I, you know, I've read so many books about selling art and about small business, and I listen to podcasts and I read blogs. So you know, you have to be willing to to do the research and to keep putting one foot in front of the other and going out and making connections. Doing things like this is great for exposure. But I just want to advocate for everybody who has some sort sure. of creative endeavor that they're considering pursuing. You, you are to stick together, right? Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Yes. Catherine, this has been a real treat Thank to visit you, with Steve. you today. I'm very impressed with your, your artwork, and I encourage people to go to the, the website and see what you've done. Now, this is your first visit with us here at mm -hmm. ETN, and uh, if something comes up in the near future, a special show or anything that we need to know about, okay. you're always welcome to come back and just send that. me a note, and uh, we'll get you back on uh, the show, and we'll talk about what's happening. So. Thank you. Thank you for having me oh, this morning. You're welcome. It's a treat to be here. It's our pleasure. So, Catherine Freshly is our special guest on City Connections today, and you're also our special guest. So thank you for joining us each week as we introduce a new guest that talks about Enid, talks about Oklahoma, and just talks about really how special uh, where we live. So again, thank you for being with us. I'm Steve Kime with the City of Enid, and you're watching City Connections. And until next time, make it a great day.